Morning everybody. Uh, this is kind of our pre-harvest uh, session on YouTube uh, where we look at some of the fall uh, ash issues that go on not only in the cornfield uh, but we'll also visit with you surrounding the Roundup Ready to Extend Flex soybean platform. So one of the things I wanted to show you and we visited with you surrounding this uh, via the weekly newsletters is what is called the push and the pinch test in corn. And what this does is basically look at the ability for you to schedule harvest, what kind of stock quality you have, whether it's strong or weak, and it kind of gives you a quick and dirty way to kind of schedule harvest. So we've come into the cornfield and this is typical of anybody else's field here in southeast Nebraska. This corn is around 25%. It's a good week to 10 days from harvestability depends upon your level of tolerance for moisture uh, but we're probably in that week to 10 day range as far as harvestability so what we do with the push test let's start with that is we basically stand next to the ear to the stalk and with your uh, elbow at 90 degrees push out and see if that stalk springs back and you do that within about 10 or 12 plants there's one that kinked and you just kind of see where you're at Generally, not too bad. We got one, oh, maybe two. I'm gonna call that about 10%. All right, so we're gonna go back to the one that, that we had kink on us. And, and generally, what you're looking at is what these nodes right above the soil line are doing. Gives you an idea as far as what went on within the plant's life to get it to this point. And I kind of always dissect these plants on purpose, just more or less from a demonstration standpoint. So cutting above the, the top third or fourth node, you can kind of see what kind of stock quality you got. Was it affected by diseases? Was it not? And right here at the soil line, you can kind of see, here's where it broke, right here at this node, and see how you're starting to see some rot go on right at the soil line. Now that's not atypical. However, given in this case, where this hybrid was one that was kind of infected quite a bit by foliar problems, and you can still see some of that, with some of the northern corn leaf bite lesions. There's gray leaf spot in here, a little bit of southern rust. Uh, that has affected the stock quality. So these are things that you still can see pre-harvest and kind of make those management decisions as you're going forth through uh, the winter and into next spring. This is an indication that this would be a harvestable field probably earlier in your schedule. So it's all a matter of looking at what your stock quality is, what the grain moisture is, and uh, scheduling accordingly. Now that's the push test. Here's the pinch test. This is just another way of doing it. You have to bend over a little bit, but you basically go from the soil line up to the second, third, and fourth node. Here's the first node, second node, third node, and fourth node. And do that on a number of plants, just like what we pushed on. And that gives you an idea as far as integrity of the stock. And here again, not too bad. So it's a little tool that you can use uh, to help you schedule harvest. Now let's go over and visit with you about the Roundup Ready to Extend and Flex soybean platform. Folks, we visited with you really summer long surrounding the Roundup Ready to Extend Flex platform. This is a new platform in our industry that's currently awaiting European approval. It's labeled for the US use. It's just that until we get worldwide import and export approvals, we can't sell them yet. Now, this is an exciting uh, thing when we launch a new genetic package along with a new trait platform. For clarity, Extend Flex includes Roundup Tolerance, Dicamba Tolerance, and Glufosinate, or commonly known as the Liberty Herbicide Tolerance. So it's a three mode tolerance in soybeans to help manage hard to control weeds such as Palmer Amaranth, Water Hemp, and Mare's Tail, which has been chronically our problem here 
for the last number of years. So what we're going to do this morning is review this via Steve Johnson. Steve Johnson is our brand agronomist. He's a fellow that works with the breeders when we're bringing a new genetic lineup uh, into the market. Give you some placement tips, what he feels will be strong performers and how it fits into our current lineup. Uh, and what will work for you on your operation. So with that, Steve, take it away. All right, so here we are in, at Minard, um, having a look at uh, the ExtendFlex soybeans. So ExtendFlex, uh, upon re release, uh, we'll be expecting the 2021 launch and uh, just waiting on EU approval today. But today we're gonna go through uh, the product portfolio and, and have, a, have a look at anywhere from group, early group two all the way up to late group uh, threes. Um, honing in on specifically Asgrove's bread and butter. Really, bread and butter has been in that gr mid group two uh, on up into the, the late group threes. And um, excited about the products that we do have in, in the ExtendFlex lineup today. Um, but we're gonna hone, on, hone in on specifics. Uh, and specifics are gonna be really on the tech side of things and uh, as data comes through, we're going to probably have the opportunity to uh, maybe cull out the herd a little bit, clean it up a touch, and uh, looking forward to the opportunity in the future. So we're going to get into individual products right after this. Thanks. All right, so the ASGRO 24XF1 is going to be a 2021 launch ExtendFlex soybean. Uh, these particular beans are going to offer uh, really good standability. They're going to be complementary to the ASGRO 26X8 extend beans. And uh, so that's kind of where we expect to maybe replace in position with year one. Uh, they're extremely good out of, out of the ground, so the emergence was great. But also we saw extremely good grow off. So when I talk about grow off, it's the ability to take off and shade and canopy. So really look forward to this one uh, getting into that more offensive environment. <coughs> But that being said, it still has the ability to take some of that defense too. So ASGRO 25XF1, another 2021 launch product in the ASGRO lineup. This, this ExtendFlex soybean is going to offer the ability to really run across the high yield environments. Uh, there is one watch out, watch out on standability. It is four rated today. As you can see right here today, it looks awfully good. It's, it's really neighboring and mirroring the 24 next to it, but uh, we gotta see where it's gonna be at on some of those irrigated fields and be 100% be sure it does stand and hold up. So, but today it looks awfully good here. A uh, couple things that I really wanna highlight, uh, extremely good brown stem rot. Uh, years like this, we're probably gonna anticipate some of those problems showing up. And also, I do look forward to this one being a 24X7 replacement, and if not, just overall companion uh, year one. All right, I'm going to talk about two ASGRO varieties uh, in the 2.7 maturity. So first one is a 2020 launch, ASGRO 27XFO, as well as the 27XF1. Both these products are, uh, are new 2.7s, but as you look at the phenotype, you can understand that these are probably gonna be positioned differently. So obviously, the 27 XFO is a very tall, upright bean. This thing had amazing emergence. It came out of the ground um, about as good as anything that we had in our lineup this year. Uh, so, and the other thing is, with that, it helps us with the canopy. So the grow off, it had that ability to shade immediately. Um, the challenge is the height is going to limit us on maybe some of those fertile environments and, and perhaps the bottoms as well as irrigate environment. The standability is going to be weak out of five. All right. Uh, the other challenge that I would say is if we know that we have SDS pressure in the field, we got to watch out on this or utilize the seed treatment to help tackle some of those problems. Conversely, 27XF1 um, really like a couple things on that. The standability is improved, greatly improved. It's going to be a three for standability. Emergence as, as, is as good. Uh, the other thing is a lot more lateral branching. So we see that branching, so it doesn't have the height, but it definitely still has the ability to canopy with that lateral branch. I think this is going to have the offensive yield for an irrigated acre, high fertility, whereas that's, that XFO is going to have more of the defense. So as I see these products and what they're going to work off of and, and replacing in the future, this product here is kind of that 
X8 type of replacement or a 26XO, which we had great luck with last year. This other one here is probably more positioned in that tougher environment, 26X8, maybe getting up even into a 3.0 if you're looking for an early maturing tough acre product. So we're going to hit on the Asgro 30XFO and 33XF1 at the same time here. So um, both these products, I think they're going to fit a very similar type of environment, yield environment, but there are some watch outs that we're going to toss in there. So the, uh, the 30 XFO right here is a 2020 launch. Had the opportunity to see it a year ago. Really like a couple of things that is coming through on the background on this one. Uh, one is the overall standability for the height is actually really good. It's a three rated product. And as you can see, very tall. This is one of our taller products in the portfolio. Um, really like that from the overall canopy grow off and, and that component. Doesn't have a ton of lateral branching, so that is a little bit of a watch out. Uh, but at the end of the day, I don't see any issues with canopy by any means. Um, a watch out on it is it's six rating on SDS. So this is a product that I would be really um, recommending anyone to uh, utilize a, uh, whether it's a Levo treated product or, or what have not to help with that SDS protection. Uh, the thing that I love about it is the Phytophthora protection with the 3A gene as well as a 4 for field tolerance is extremely good. So that is where I really like its defensive capabilities. Its yield is going to work awfully good on the low and take it up to the high end as well. The 33 XF1, as you can see, a little bit shorter phenotype. But don't let that scare you. It's got amazing lateral branching. It's got uh, great canopy really when it comes down to it. Uh, great, great overall standability. It's a two rated product for standability. Um, SDS rating is a three. So there's a big compare contrast on the rating scales here. A two point jump is a big deal. So I really like it from that. Um, I see this product as an opportunity to replace those AG34X7 acres that we used to have out here. And uh, it's going to stand much better for one, but it's going to have similar yield potential on the low end as well as not really lose a whole lot of ground if, if the mother nature hits us and we get the rain that we need. So um, both these I think have a great opportunity and a fit in the portfolio. All right, so I'm going to hit on AG35XF1 and 30, AG36X6 kind of together here and uh, it is by design we uh, we have these right next to each other for a reason because 30 35 xf1 is offspring of ag 36 x6 i think that's a that's a really really good telling tale here the phenotypes look real similar maybe just a smidge on height variation but outside of that uh, real similar the branching that 35 xf ones has is uh, almost second to none. I really like it from that standpoint. Height is moderate. It's something that we can take on some of our best ground and also um, you know, even throw it on some irrigated pivots and not worry about standability. Standability is going to be right in there where we need it. Emergence, I saw a great improvement in emergence over the AG36X6. So that's a great call out. Um, SDS score, SDS score of a four. And uh, that's something that I think we all are looking for, especially on years like this where um, fields that are prone to it are showing it. So um, really think this is going to offer a great opportunity to replace some of its uh, predecessors, AG36X6's acres, and um, look forward to seeing how it does this fall. So as Steve has mentioned at length, we've got a very exciting lineup to look at for the 2021 season. Um, that doesn't mean that Roundup Ready 2 extends soybeans are going to go away. Some of the old favorites like 33XOs, 36X6s will still be in the lineup. There's a few others, 37X8s, 39X9s uh, will still be around for a few years yet. Uh, but the future looks quite bright within this lineup. Remember, this is all new genetics. Uh, and like I've said many times before, it's the genetics that put it in the bin for you, not so much the trait platform. The trait platform allows you tools to manage your weeds or your weed pressure problems. So with that, we'll wrap it up as far as our ExtendFlex platforms. Uh, we'll start looking for data as we start harvesting these plots. And as always, be safe, be healthy.